continuing with Harper Lee's American classic To Kill a Mockingbird. A Mockingbird. This will be chapter 26. Um, I did everything I could to try to put my contacts in, but they weren't working. Uh, so while I have a second here, if you get a chance, hit this, or don't, not if you get a chance, do it right now. Hit the subscribe button because I'm trying to get some contacts and I'm trying to build the station. So take a second, hit the subscribe button right now, and you have good luck. All right? This is, um, it's Kill a Mockingbird, Chapter 26. Hit the subscribe. All right, thank you. School started, and so did our daily tri trips past the Radley place. Jim was in the seventh grade and went to high school, beyond the grammar school building. I was now in third grade, and our routines were so different, I only walked to school with Jim in the mornings and saw him at mealtimes. He went out for football, but was too slender and too young yet to do anything but carry the team water buckets. This he did with enthusiasm. Most afternoons he was seldom home before dark. The Radley place ceased to terrify me, but it was no less gloomy, no less chilly under its great oaks, and no less uninviting. Mr. Nathan Radley could still be seen on a clear day, walking to and from town. We knew Boo was there, for the same old reason. Nobody had seen him carried out yet. I sometimes felt a twinge of remorse when passing by the old place. At ever having taken part, it must have been sheer torment to Arthur Radley. What reasonable recluse wants children peeping through his shutters, delivering greetings at the end of a fishing pole, wandering in his collar at night? And yet I remember two Indian head pennies, chewing gum, soap dolls, a rusty metal, a broken watch and chain. Jim must have put them away somewhere. I stopped when I looked at the old tree one afternoon. The trunk was swelling around the cement patch. The patch itself was turning yellow. We had almost seen him a couple of times, a good enough score for anybody. But I still looked for him each time I went by. Maybe someday we would see him. I imagined how it would be when it happened. He'd just be sitting in the swing when I came along. How'd he do, Mr. Arthur? I would say as if I had said it every afternoon in my life. Evening, Jean Louise, he would say as if he had said it every afternoon in my life. Right pretty spell we're having, isn't it? Yes, sir, right pretty, I would say, and go on. It was only a fantasy. We would never see him. He probably did go out when the moon was down and gazed upon Miss Stephanie Crawford. I had to pick somebody else to look at, but that was his business. He would never gaze at us. You aren't starting that again, are you, said Atticus one night, when I expressed a straight desire just to have one good look at Boo Radley before I died. If you are, I'll tell you right now. Stop it. I'm too old to go chasing you off the Radley property. Besides, it's dangerous. You might get shot. You know Mr. Nathan shoots at every shadow he sees, even shadows that leave size four bare footprints. You are lucky not to be killed. I hushed then and there. At the same time, I marveled at Atticus. This was the first he had let us know he knew a lot more about something than we thought he knew, and it happened years ago. No, only last summer. No, summer before last. When... Time was playing tricks on me. I must remember to ask Jim. So many things had happened to us. Boo Radley was the least of our fears. Atticus said he didn't see how anything else could happen. That things had a way of settling down. And after enough time, people passed. And after enough time passed, people would forget that Tom Robinson's existence was even brought to their attention. Perhaps Atticus was right. But the events of the summer hung over us like smoke in a closed room. The adults in Maycomb never discussed the case with Jim and me. It seemed that they discussed it with their children, and their attitude must have been that neither of us could help having Atticus for a parent, so their children must be nice to us in spite of him. The children would never have thought that up for themselves had our classmates been left to their own devices. Jim and I would have had several swift, satisfying fist fights apiece and ended the matter for good. As it was, we were compelled to hold our heads high and be respectable, a gentleman and a lady. In a way, it was like the air of Mrs. Henry Lafayette Du Bois, without all her yelling. This was one odd thing, though, that I never understood. In spite of Atticus's shortcomings as a parent, people were content to re-elect him to the state legislature that year, as usual, without opposition. I came to the conclusion that people were just peculiar. I withdrew from them and never thought about them until I was forced to. I was forced to one day at school. Once a week, we had a current events period. Each child was supposed to clip an item from a newspaper, absorb its contents, and reveal them to the class. This practice allegedly overcame a variety of evils. Standing in front of his fellows encouraged good posture and gave a child poise. Delivering a short talk made him word conscious. Learning his current events strengthened his memory. Being singled out made him more than ever anxious to return to the group. <laughs> The idea was profound, but as usual, in Macon, it didn't work very well. In the first place, very few rural children had access to newspapers, so the burden of current events was borne by the town children, convincing the bus children more deeply that the town children got all the attention anyway. The rural children who could usually brought clippings from what they called the grit paper, 
a publication spurious in the eyes of Miss Gates, our teacher. Why she frowned when a child recited from the grit paper, I never knew, but in some way it was associated with liking fiddling, eating syrupy biscuits for lunch, being a holy roller, singing sweetly sings the donkey, and pronouncing it donkey, all of which the state paid teachers to discourage. Even so, not many of the children knew what a current event was. Little Chuck Little, a hundred years old in his knowledge of cows and their habits, was halfway through an Uncle Natchel story when Miss Gates stopped him. Charles, that is not a current event. This is an advertisement. Sequel Jacobs knew what was one, what one was, though. When his turn came, he went to the front of the room and began, Old Hitler, Adolf Hitler, Cecil, said Miss Gates. One never begins with old anybody. Yes, ma'am, he said. Old Adolf Hitler has been prosecuting. The persecuting, says Cecil. No, Miss Gates, it says here. Well, anyway, old Adolf Hitler have been after the Jews, and he's putting them in prisons, and he's taking away all their property, and he won't let any of them out of the country, and he's washing all the feeble-minded. and Washing the feeble-minded? Yes, ma'am, Mrs. Gates. I reckon they don't have sense enough to wash themselves. I don't reckon an idiot could keep himself clean. Well, anyway, Hitler started a program to round up all the half-Jews, too. He wants to register them in case they might want to come in in any trouble, and I think it's a bad thing, and that's my current event. <laughs> Very good, Cecil, said Mrs. Gates, putting Cecil, please, puffing Cecil, returned to his seat. A hand went up in the back of the room. How can he do that? Who do what? Uh, said Mrs. Gates patiently. I mean, how can Hitler just put a bunch of folks in a pen like that? Looks like the government stop him, said the owner of the hand. Hitler is the government, said Miss Gates, and seizing an opportunity to make education dynamic, she went to the blackboard. She printed democracy in large letters. Democracy, she said. Does anybody have a definition? Us, uh, somebody said. I raised my hand, remembering an old campaign slogan Atticus had once told me about. What do you think it means, Jean Louise? Equal rights for all, spreffle special privileges for none, I quoted. Very good, Jean Louise, very good. Miss Gates smiled in front of democracy. She printed a we are a. Now, class, say it together. We are a democracy. We said it, then Miss Gates said, that's the difference between America and Germany. We are a democracy and Germany is a dictatorship. Dictatorship, she said. Over here, we don't believe in persecuting anybody. Persecution comes from people who are prejudiced. Prejudice, she enunciated carefully. There are no better people in the world than Jews, and why Hitler doesn't think so is a mystery to me. An inquiring soul in the middle of the room said, Why don't they like the Jews, you reckon, Miss Gates? I don't know, Henry. They contribute to every society they live in, and most of all, they are deeply religious people. Hitler's trying to do away with religion, so maybe he doesn't like them for that reason. Cecil spoke up. Well, I don't know for certain, he said. They're supposed to change money or something, but that ain't no cause to persecute them. They're white, ain't they? Miss Gates said, when you get to high school, Cecil, you'll learn that the Jews have been persecuted since the beginning of history, even driven out of their own country. It's one of the most terrible stories in history. Time for arithmetic, children. As I had never liked arithmetic, I spent the period looking out the window. The only time I ever saw Atticus scowl was when Elmer Davis would give us the latest on Hitler. Atticus would snap off the radio and say, huh. I asked him once why he was impatient when with Hitler and Atticus said, because he's a maniac. This would not do, I mused as the class proceeded with its sums. One maniac and millions of German folks looked at me like they'd shut Hitler in a pen instead of letting him shut them up. There was something else wrong. I would ask my father about it. I did, and he said he could not possibly answer my question because he didn't know the answer. But it's okay to hate Hitler? It is not, he said. It's not okay to hate anybody. Atticus, I said, there's something I understand. Miss Gates said it was awful, Hitler doing like he does. She got real red in the face about it. I should think she would. But, yes? Nothing, sir. I went away, not sure that I could explain to Atticus what was on my mind, not sure that I could clarify what was only a feeling. Perhaps Jim could provide the answer. Jim understood school things better than Atticus. Jim was worn out from a day's water carrying. There were at least 12 banana peels on the floor of his bed, surrounding an empty milk bottle. What you stuffing for, I asked. Coach said if I gain 25 pounds by next year, I can play, he said. This is the quickest way. If you don't throw it all up, Jim, I said, I want to ask you something. Shoot, he put down his book and stretched his legs. Miss Gates is a nice lady, ain't she? Why, sure, said Jim. I liked her when I was in her room. 
She hates Hitler a lot. What's wrong with that? Well, she went on today about how bad it was him treating the Jews like that, Jim. It's not right to persecute anybody, is it? I mean, I have mean thoughts about anybody. Even, even, is it? Gracious no, Scout. What is eating you? Well, coming out of the courthouse that night, Miss Gates was, she was going down the steps in front of us. You must have not seen her. She was talking with Miss Stephanie Crawford. I heard her say it's time somebody taught him a lesson. They were getting way about themselves. And the next thing they think of is Mary. Can do is marry us, Jim. How can you hate Hitler so bad that turn around and be ugly to folks right at home? Jim was suddenly furious. He leapt off the bed, grabbed me by the collar, and shook me. I never want to hear about that courthouse again. Ever. Ever. You hear me? You never hear me? Don't you ever say one more word to me about that again. You hear me? Now go on. I was too surprised to cry. I crept from Jim's room and shut the door softly. Less undue noise set him off again. Suddenly tired, I wanted Atticus. He was in the living room, and I went to him and tried to get in his lap. Atticus smiled. You're getting so big now, I'll just have to hold part of you. He held me close. Scout, he said softly, don't let Jim get you down. He's having a rough time these days. I heard you back there. Atticus said that Jim was trying hard to forget something, but what he was really doing was storing it away for a while until enough time passed. Then he would be able to think about it and sort himself out. When he was able to think about it, Jim would be himself again. That was uh, chapter 26 of To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, really adult stuff there, that handling by kids, that's the overall theme of the book. And uh, Scout's like, um, she has honest questions. She's like, why is it okay for Hitler to do these things to Jews? And everybody's saying how Hitler's a bad guy and everything. But then she hears, sees the same pair of people being hypocritical. Like, they don't say the word, but they're being hypocrites. Mrs. Gates is being a hypocrite because she's leaving the courthouse after they wrongly get big Tom Robinson. And she says something prejudiced, like, Oh, it's about time they taught him a lesson, you know. Oh, really? Is is it is that is that is that accurate, you know? And so Scout, you know, seeing things uh, as a, as a child sees it before the world had crapped on her, you know. That's why kids can see things differently because the world is yet to crap on them. And so, like, she sees it like tabula rasa, clean slate, and uh, she's like, hey, that's not right, you know. If it's not right for Hitler to do that to Jewish people. It's not right for us to do that to Tom Robinson. So, and then that's when Jim gets upset. He's he's going through puberty. He's trying to make the football team. And the way Atticus explains it is Jim isn't a bad person. Uh, he just doesn't know how to deal with it like that. And you get that a lot from people. Um, you know, when it's a sensitive subject and they're going through a lot in their lives, they just don't want to deal with it right now. It's, sometimes it's hard to talk about these type of things. So. All right, if you enjoyed that reading, uh, don't forget to click the thumbs up button. More importantly, hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to get this over a certain amount of subscribers so I can you know, do more things, have a blue screen screen, have a lot more uh, things going on. So once again, just hit the subscribe button. It'll take you two seconds. And uh, thanks for listening. Have a nice day.